Okay, so this is not a review video, but hopefully it will give you some perspective on the Sony ZV-E10 because, well, it's crazy what's happening with that camera. And perhaps this video is going to be a little bit critical or maybe negative towards that camera, but I don't intend to be. It's just a camera that doesn't appeal to me because it's missing some of the features that I enjoy about my little APS-C cameras. But nevertheless, it is worthy of a video and worthy of discussion because what's happening is kind of crazy. Let's jump into it. So the Sony ZV-E10 is a mouthful of a name. It was launched in August of 2021, which is last year. And when it was launched, Sony did an amazing job of handing it out to every single reviewer on YouTube and their mom. And so there were a ton of review videos about that camera and the vast majority of them were very positive overall. This was a vlogger focused, simplified, compact APS-C camera at a good price. It offered Sony's amazing autofocus system, a huge array of available lenses and some cool features like a built-in three capsule microphone on top. When it was released, Sony asked me if I wanted to review one and I said, absolutely not, no way in just a more polite way because I like viewfinders and a camera without a viewfinder is just not a camera in my eyes uh, and I get it. There are people who are more video focused and if you shoot a lot of video, most of the time you're not looking through the viewfinder to set up your shot. But I shoot a ton of video, a lot of it outside and I still look through the viewfinder all the time to make sure that my settings are somewhat decently correct. A lot of time they're still not, but still I try to get pretty close. And I also shoot a lot of photos with my camera. And if you shoot photos in addition to your video, even if it's, let's say 10% of the time and 90% of the time you take video, it's nice to have a viewfinder for when you are taking photos. Sony cameras, the screens on the back are notoriously dim for outdoor viewing. So if you're relying on just your screen to make sure that your shot's right, it just probably won't be right 100% of the time. So the moral of the story is that I never reviewed that camera and I never bought one. Had I known what I know today about that camera, I would have bought 10 of them back in the day and would have become a thousandaire in a matter of a couple of months, uh, which is all crazy. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, this all started a couple of months ago when my wife was giving me the suggestion that maybe she wanted to start a little YouTube channel for Lucas and his new sister, just to record some videos, family stuff, maybe a couple of funny videos for YouTube, who knows? And she wanted something that's compact, portable, easy to take with her, which the APC lineup is perfect for, but she wanted even smaller than that. Uh, so I thought that the Sony ZV-1 was the perfect candidate for that because this is a small compact camera. It has a flippy screen for vlogging style. It has a built-in lens that extends when you turn it on just like that. So you don't have to worry about swapping lenses. It has a one inch sensor. So it's a little bit smaller than the APC sensor, but it's still decently good. Very good autofocus. Uh, good features, has a nice microphone on top. Uh, for a small point and shoot camera, this is a great little option. But when I was researching this camera, obviously the Sony ZV-E10 popped up as the alternative or the upgrade because the Sony ZV-E10 has the ability to swap lenses, it has the APS-C sensor, it has a couple of other cool features on it. So. I went online and this is what I saw when I pulled up Amazon. There simply was no listing for Sony ZV-E10. It's like it doesn't exist. I pulled up B&H photo and there are a couple of listings, which is good, but more on the way, more on the way, more on the way, back ordered. If I tried to click on any of these and order one, I just simply could not order it. I can only request assistance or that's about it. And so I hopped over to trusty old eBay to see what was happening. And to my astonishment, I saw them available for sale. So here's one, 1650 for an open box one. Here's one for 1399 for a brand new, but it's out of the box, so how new can it be? Here's one brand new for $1,700. 
Another one, open box, $13.74. Here's one for $12.99. Here's one with uh, just a Sigma 16 millimeter lens and the kit lens, the 16 to 50, which is worth nothing for $2,500 USD. Now, I thought to myself immediately, there's no way that people are paying these sorts of prices for this APS-C camera. That doesn't make any sense. So I scrolled down, clicked on sold items, and this is a nice thing. You can see what people are paying for stuff. And to my surprise, this is today. Today is April 23rd. Today, someone paid $1,374 for an open box ZVE10. Here is another one, $1,100. Here's one for $1,600. Here's one for $1,700. All of these are sold. People actually paid these crazy prices for these new and used cameras. Now, I was researching this and Sony Japan actually released a statement a couple of months ago saying that they stopped production of the ZVE10 and they canceled all of the existing orders for that camera and they cited the chip shortage or the chip supply chain issue as the culprit. Now, I tried researching the chip shortage and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. The last article that I read said that it was a poor planning issue that caused the chip shortage. I get it. A lot of things rely on chips and factories were affected and who knows where all the chips are now. But you'd think that after two plus years of an ongoing chip shortage, stuff would be better and more would be figured out. But here we are in uh, early to mid 2022, still dealing with supply chain chip shortage issues. And Sony undoubtedly had access to some chips and maybe that's what they did is they shifted their focus from putting those chips into $700 camera bodies and instead use them in their $3,500 video focused full frame cameras. That's what a smart company would do. And so it makes perfect sense. But these prices are absolutely ridiculous if you are trying to buy this camera on a site such as eBay. Okay, so what I did was I did not pay $1,700 for that camera. I actually picked up this Sony ZV-1 for $450. And while it's maybe not as nice as the upgraded ZV-E10, uh, this is still a pretty decent little camera. And the only thing that I would say about it that's kind of a big negative is the one inch sensor is not exactly a low light performer. You can definitely tell a difference between this camera and the A6100 in low light situations. But beyond that, the autofocus is great. Uh, the lens on this is actually not very bad at all. Um, and so it's been a great little camera to play around with and take some family video with. And actually on the same day that I bought this ZV-1, I picked up a full frame Sony a7 III uh, here locally in the Austin area for $900, which was crazy. It's a super good deal. And this is where I'm going to drop some recommendations because people are spending crazy amounts of money on an APS-C camera and it doesn't make sense. Now, I understand that the ZV-E10 is a vlogging focused camera, has a flipping screen, has some vlogger features, if you wanna call them that. But when you compare it to a camera such as the A6100 that you could still flip the screen up, it still does 4K, it still has basically the same exact performance as the ZV-E10, it just does not make a whole lot of sense. Now, there are companies out there that charge you more for less features. Uh, that's not a new thing in business. But in this case, it's not Sony charging you more for less. It's people who have a camera and then other people who want a camera and they're just willing to pay crazy amounts of money for it. It's simple supply and demand. But at least personally, I don't think that there is a reason for this increased demand, especially when you have so many other options out there available on the market, both new and used from just within the Sony lineup. You can buy an A6100 and you can buy several lenses and you can buy a collection of lenses for $1,700. You can get this ZV-1 and take the... $1,200, $1,300 left over and put that into Bitcoin. You can get a full frame Sony a7 III and a very nice lens for less than $1,700 nowadays. You can get an a6600 and a Sigma 18-50 super nice lens 
for less money and you'll still have some leftover cash to pick up a couple of shares of GameStonk. There are just too many options even within the Sony lineup to where I would even recommend buying this ZV-E10 ever, period. It just does not make any sense. And I think that that camera in particular, the hype that it received was greater than what we're seeing, which is a demand driven price increase. Because eventually when these companies start manufacturing chips again and they figure out their timelines, Amazon and b &H Photo will restock and they will have the ZV-E10 available for purchase for $700 again. And then the people who spent $1,700 on eBay are probably gonna be sad. Uh, at least I would be if I spent $1,000 over retail for something just to get it. And then a week or two later, or a couple months later, it's available for significantly less. If you're looking at buying a camera for content creation, take a look at the a6100. This will get you just as good of results. I mean, within 99% of the same results that you would have gotten with the much more expensive ZV-E10. It's the same sensor, uh, same thing that you could be using and same flippy screen. It's not sideways flippy like this one, but honestly, I like the flip up screen more personally. Uh, that's just me though. So anyway, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned something from it. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of these crazy prices. Would you spend $1,700 on a ZV-E10? Or if you had an extra $1,700 to spend on cameras and lenses, what would be your ideal combo that you would spend that on? As always, thank you so much for all of your comments, all of your likes and your support. Stay tuned for more videos and have a nice day. Bye-bye.